career. It's like, so can you move up a career ladder uh, or are you given opportunities to take on leadership roles? So some jurisdictions had really well-defined career ladders in that like everyone starts off as a beginning teacher and you just start to, as you get more and more experience, uh, doors start to open up, right? Oh, you've had this much experience. Now let's take a look at, see if you can be, take on this leadership role of leading this team at the school. Now you've done that. Okay. Now let's take a look at whether or not you can be an administrator at the school. Okay. You've done that. Okay. Now let's see if you want to, if you want an opportunity to go work at a district level or at a state level or at a governmental letter level and it's really interesting because if you move up a level, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to give up what you were doing before. So some people get into like these upper levels, but they're still continuing to teach. Maybe their load is a little bit less. Maybe they teach like one or two classes a day and then spend the rest of their day like mentoring or helping or supporting other teachers. And it's really like nice to see that you don't have to make a decision of, oh, do I get to teach or do I get to move up, right? No, you, you, get, you, get, you get to choose. Well, how much of this do you wanna spend, right? How far up the career ladder do you wanna go up? It's really dependent on you and how much you work you do. And it's really dependent on, in some places, research comes into play when you're moving up the career ladder. So in places like Shanghai, you have to publish research right and then your publications determine how high up you can move in the career ladder which is really interesting uh next is school curriculum and a career ladder well if you want to go up the career ladder in in california you pretty much have to go back to school again you got to pay for that out of pocket or take out a loan you know just pay for it yourself right out of your meager teacher salary and then maybe you can get an administrative credential and then you get to completely leave your classroom and then so that you can go into a position where you can tell other teachers what they're doing wrong. It's, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And that's how you climb the career ladder. You get more degrees, right? More credentials, and then you move up. And then as you move up, you get paid more, right? The other way is if you take more classes, right? So we have a, like, you can think of it like as a grid of pay, right? And how many classes, college level classes you've taken moves you up the ladder, right? So if you wanna move all the way to the right, then have a master's or a PhD. And then once you get to that level, then you get the maximum amount of pay. And then the other part is time. So how long you've been a teacher, that's the other axis. So how many classes have you taken? How long you've been a teacher? That determines your pay. That's it, All right? And, and it's really weird because if you wanna be a teacher uh, and get the, to the furthest end, you gotta have a master's. And they've done studies on this, on teachers that have master's to see if their teaching quality is any better than a teacher that just has a bachelor's degree. And the answer to that is no, they don't. So essentially what we're doing is we're paying teachers to get these degrees that don't help them in their teaching and we're just giving them more money as opposed to merit. Now, how are we gonna attract, you know, new te like teachers to, to be a part of this system? It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense.